Rockies of Connecticut on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, along with my running mate, Dick Vitale. UConn, 14 straight in the conference. That ties a Big East mark, Dick. Right now, they're on a tremendous run, 23 in a row. But the team that Georgetown played over the weekend, Memphis, might have been a good warm-up for this one. For I thought it was really a good test, a good preliminary. Psychologically, they needed a big win. And they got a great win over Memphis. They played brilliantly. They had balance. They had Iverson for 30 and Harrington for 27. For them to have a shot to win tonight, John Thompson's got to design offensively. Shots for Othella Harrington. He has to be involved offensively. Let's take a look at the Buick starting lineups tonight. First... For Jim Calhoun's UConn Huskies, Sheffer and Allen in the backcourt. Rudy Johnson and Kirk King, who's coming off a good game of 13 points and 8 rebounds. And then Travis Knight, the senior, who's so much improved in the last couple of years. For John Thompson, Iverson and the freshman Victor Page in the backcourt. Bubakar Au and Jerome Williams up front. And as Dick mentioned, Othella Harrington's been coming on when they desperately need him. He had a 27-point, 10-rebound double-double over the weekend. Kevin McHale, the Timberwolves, Jerry West to the Lakers, Lee Rose of the Bucks in the middle. It is scout night as they take a look at two of the very best in the country in Ray Allen and Allen Iverson. We got all the stars out tonight, all from the media. We got the big time media people here. Kornheiser and Wilpon from out of Washington, Weiss from out of New York. We got Mizell from out of New York. They're all gathered. This is like an NCAA environment right now, Mr. Nestle. The top two teams in the Big East in scoring, the top two teams in field goal shooting, the top two teams in rebounds. Something has to give. Teddy Valentine will toss it. We're underway in Landover. Othella Harrington straight to the hoop. Got to get him involved. He's got to get some touches, and he starts out automatically with a quick deuce. Scramble on the floor. UConn's ball. Othella with the jumper to open the score. He's only averaging eight shots a game, 203 for the season. For example, contrast that with Iverson, 430 attempts. Some backcourt pressure from the Hoyas. We're going to see a lot of that on both sides tonight. Jeffer gets it ahead. It's King. Connecticut's won the last five meetings, Brad. The 42nd meeting that dates back to the 50s. Shepard gives him such experience. 24 years of age. Shepard, a good outside shooter. He can make the open three. His 71st three-pointer of the year did he count the lead. What an amazing record the Huskies have. 16 and 2 the last two years. 14 and zip this year in the Big East. Page, the freshman whose productivity has dropped off recently. Oh, Fella Harrington tried to turn around on the baseline. He was dominant against Lorenzen Wright, one of the best big people in the country. Allen Iverson, right yep. out of the gate. Here we go. He had his first five shots against Memphis. At 30. With four rebounds, four assists, and three steals. Here's that one, two, one, one pressure. Here's a two on one. Shepard pulls up, and it rattled out. Harrington will clear it for the Hoyas. Iverson is so quick. Page all alone for three. He started off this year really on fire. See, nobody rotated back. Oh, he walked. Woody Johnson. Did you think a walk right there? I thought maybe he took an extra step. They give him the long step, I guess. Shepard made a great pass the length of the court. The length of the court drive the other way. Can he get to the basket? I mean, he's so explosive. Give him a little daylight. 7-5 Hoyas. They're on Shepard, one of the top assist men in the conference. One thing that Georgetown likes to do is send four people to the board. They get four guys to the offensive glass, and they don't rotate back with great defensive balance. You can get some layups. On the other side, you want to slow them down. You want to make them play in a half-court game offensively, like Villanova did when you and I had the game. That's right. That was so effective. Georgetown brings in Joseph to Omu. He did a lineup, first man off the bench. Jeffer leans in on Iverson, and now gets double teamed. That leaves Knight open. Knight had a big game in our last game. 12 points, seven block shots, career high. Here's Allen open as they work it around to the left wing. Got a wide open look and missed it, but got his own rebound. Ray goes right back up with it and almost threw up an air ball. And nobody rotated back.
Scheffler stays in front of Iverson. He shows some control right here. This is what they want him to learn how to do. That's what John Thompson's been working with him on. Showing him how to play the game. Iverson around a pick. Mr. the three. Scheffler grabs a rebound. It's nice to have a big guard that can give you an extra dimension as a rebounder. Shepard's so solid in every facet, and he's got the nice dish to Kirk King. Beautiful look inside by Shepard. He's a complete player, Brad. Third in the conference in assists. He shows why with that pass. Seven apiece. And Tuomo comes out. Victor Page back in. They gotta get some scoring out of Page. As you said earlier, he hasn't been as productive as he was earlier in the campaign. Now will inbound to Iverson. Here's where they've been struggling. They have struggled in their half-court sets against teams that have made them play half-court basketball. Let's see the kind of execution against the zone right now by Connecticut. Ten on the shot clock. The high post pass to Othello Harrington. He wheels and delivers. That one. Comes out on him. And King is fouled as he was trying to clear out with that rebound. Jerome Williams got it. One thing is very obvious early in the game here that Georgetown wants to utilize Othella Harrington. He's too hot a commodity or too good a commodity not to use him. And at times it seemed that way, but that's like you said, because Iverson is such a main part of their offense. As Williams playing that pointed at pressure, giving him a big guy. There's the diagonal pass. King's open. Got to take it. Try to get his own rebound. And the car out comes out of there with it. Now he's going to take it the length to the court. And do a foul. Move the out, trying to make things happen, attacking. A lot of hugs going on. You mentioned Othella Harrington, a hot commodity in high school of all USA. All-American first team. Five guys were Jason Kidd, Roderick Rhodes, a guy by the name of Corliss Williamson. And then you had uh, Williamson, Rhodes. I'm missing a guy. Help me with a guy. Now you got me wondering. I'm going to get it. I'll get it before the night's over. So Heidi White checks in. Othella will get a breather. Chris Weber was probably going to No, he wasn't long long here. Now it was Robert Groves, it was Othella Harrington, it was Jason Kidd, Corliss Williamson. I'm drawing a blank on the fifth one. I've drawn a few blanks in my life. <laughs> I've drawn a few blanks. There goes Al on a fifth one. Maybe they know in the studio. Maybe the Secretary of State can help us out. Follow. Always by one. And a nice hustle by Victor Page defensively to knock it away from Rudy Johnson. So quick. Mr. Excitement with the rock in his hands. Just has to learn how to play from the point guard slot, understanding the role of the game. Here he is trying to take control. He's made great strides. People have to realize this kid's only in his second year. Pulls up over Shepard. Short. Johnson the rebound. Stripped away by Al, and now it's Jerome Williams with the left hand. Nice play by Jerome Williams, utilizing the left hand. Very active at that point of that pressure. Williams by three. And Williams, another nice defensive play. Knocks it away. It'll be UConn ball, but not until we take a timeout. Seven minutes, 45 seconds remaining. First half. Hoyas leads 10 7. School record in steals. He shows you why right there. That is his 98th steal of the year. Last season, he had 89 to set a record. He shattered it this year. That's amazing. You look at those numbers and what he does in terms of his offense as well. He's such a positive force on the floor. He was defensive player of the year as a freshman. I mean, as a diaper dandy in the Big East, he's voted defensive player of the year. Ricky Moore's checked in for UConn. Sheffer, strong move on the baseline. Sheffer very active also offensively here. Five for Sheffer. Here's the 2 2 1 press. Press that was made famous by John Wooden. It was in a Westwood utilized it with UCLA when they won those 10 national titles in 12 years. Iverson got some good pressure from Ricky Moore. Five minutes into the game. 10 9 Georgetown. Page. And he's hit. 
as he went up to the shot by Shepard. Well, we've got a lot more to come on Big Monday. We'll switch the Big 8, Nebraska, and fifth rank Kansas at 9.30. And then we'll cap it off with a triple header. Colorado State, a great three-point shooting team against New Mexico. That's at midnight. Triple header night on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Here, the opener has Georgetown leading UConn 10-9. Kansas had a big win over Iowa State at Iowa State. What a job Tim Floyd is doing down here. You think about Kansas, Roy Williams has won over 200 games in eight years of coaching. Wait a minute, I got the name. It just flashed on me. How could I forget? Dante Bright, right from out of here, playing with Massachusetts. He was the fifth guy on an All-USA, All-American high school team. Now you can sleep tonight. I can sleep. Wow. So can I if your room's not next to mine. Oh, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Boys by three. See Williams so active at the point of that pressure. Gives him a big guy. Takes away the passing angle. Moore oh. picked up his dribble, but he found Sheffer open. So well coached. Connecticut does. They score after a basket as well as anyone. But a breakdown. Defensive transition not existing. Al is on Ray Allen. Let's see if they can get it in the end of the 34th hand. He's got to get a little more active without the ball. He's got to want that basketball. Double team on Sheffer. Might pay off it does. Othello Harrington ahead to Iverson. And the follow by Williams. Right now, they're out hustling Connecticut. Yes, they are, are really strapping and hustling. Seven-point Georgetown advantage. We're going to watch the double team right now. Shepard tries to throw it over to big guy, and that's what size can do for you. Harrington made that happen with his great size and then a good outlet. And then we'll watch Iverson come up empty, but we're going to see the great offensive rebound. Georgetown a 10-2 advantage on fast break points, including that one. With the trail man, you'd like to have a guy trailing, and you like to look diagonal. Whoops, they threw it away again. That's normally the way Connecticut plays. Smart play, smart play, back it out. Out trapped on the baseline, now Iverson around the traffic. Inside, oh, Pelican. what a big time move. Super scintillating, sensational. The little guy, Allen Iverson. Oh, they're pumped up. They are so pumped up here tonight. These Hoya fans, this is Hoya heaven right now. There goes Iverson. Look at him explode to the basket. Great body control hanging right into traffic. Look at him take the ball right into traffic. Took that right at Mikhail, right at Jerry West. He says, you guys want a piece of this too? You want to try and get a piece of it? Notice saying, we want you. We want you. Yeah, who would? There's the numbers leading the Big East in scoring and steals and looking for his eighth point already. And we're less than seven minutes into the game. Life of my choice, point guard, all Americans look at Mikhail. Chart those notes, Kevin. Come on now, Kevin. Ray Allen's got to get active. Another steal by Iverson. Straight up with it again off the glass. What an amazing show we're watching right here early in this game. Chip Dahoon's got to get a timeout. He gets one. He's got to settle the Huskies down, baby. Georgetown without a turnover. UConn has five of them. And Georgetown's turning them into points. And Iverson is 98th and 99th steals of the season already tonight. What a defensive back he would be. Think about that. What a quarterback he would be with that superb quickness and anticipation ability. How about the adjustment to go way high on the glass when he knew he was going to be pressed by Knight to get a hand in his face. And look at him change direction. His eyes are up. For all you young people out there, you watch when he dribbles. His eyes are up. Jerome Williams with a big smile. 100 steals. A Georgetown record. I said 98th and 99th. He had one earlier. That's three already tonight. You know, it's not automatic he's going to the NBA. You can check the track record here in Georgetown. Good morning, the Ewing, and the Combo. 
See if UConn can calm things down. Knights fouled by Nichols, who just checked in. Travis had a broken thumb. You and I were talking about it. You said it was his left hand. You spotted a little tape on the left hand. Had a couple of screws put in that. Had a great game against the Irish in Notre Dame. 12 points, but it was the seven block shots that impressed Jim Calhoun. Yep. We were speaking to him yesterday. Travis just has improved by leaps and bounds, really, from a couple of years ago. What an amazing story Connecticut has been. I mean, you talk about dominance the last three years in the Big East. 16-2, back-to-back, and this year 14-0. Knight missed the second. Georgetown by 11. Georgetown now sits in the zone. I mean, right now, Connecticut rotates in the zone. Let's see if Georgetown gets into the gaps. Number three is a guy that can shoot you out of the zone in a hurry. Here's Williams from 17. Kept alive by the big fella underneath. White missed in close. And Johnson will clear it for the Huskies. So Heidi White, a big space eater on the interior, made a good offensive rebound, but didn't convert. Ray Allen's got to get himself. Seven and a half minutes in, he's scoreless, Dick. Only taking two shots. One a three-pointer, and then got his own rebound and missed a deuce. And Iverson hustles. Jeffers going to have to, well, it was six and one, a half a dozen of the other. I think they're going to be a turnover or a steal. I've never seen Ray Allen so real passive on a court, really passive here tonight early. Doesn't seem to really be playing with that kind of enthusiasm and that kind of spirit. He's a beautiful young man and a great talent. He's coming off a great game over Notre Dame. 28 points, 10 rebounds, three steals, three blocks. But tonight, zero. He seems two. to be thinking a lot out there, Brad. He's not just reacting and playing. Georgetown can do that to you. They can take your field goal shooting right down to the bare minimum, that's for sure. In an earlier game this year against Villanova, Jim Calhoun took him out for about a minute, brought him back in, and he put on the greatest first-half performance I've witnessed all year. He was Jordanist. That's how super he was. Here's Nichols for three. Got it. He can shoot the three. Came in with a reputation as a three-point shooter. His 30th of the year, as a matter of fact, and the lead balloons to 14. Georgetown looks very quick tonight and very active. Schefter got Iverson in the air, but they cut him off at the pass on the baseline. Knights on the drive. Little finger roll won't go. Tries to follow it. Third time, still no good. I can't understand it. I'm watching Ray Allen, and I do not see any bounce in Ray Allen at all here tonight. And that really shocks me. I thought he is going to be so fired up. There's a lot of bounce in the Hoyas, though. Down by 14 with 11.50 to go first half. And Dick, if you'll take a look at Ray Allen without the ball, we could do this with a still shot. We don't even have to have a camera. A picture would do this for you. There's number 34 for Connecticut. He's trying to point that he wants the ball to be thrown to the wing, but he's been basically passive all night long. He's been standing and watching, not attacking the glass. Now you look at his numbers here. Look at the possessions. We're talking right now possessions, touches, and points. And we look right now at Allen. He's 19 possessions. He's only touched the ball six times. Zero points. On the other side, 20 possessions, 18 touches by Iverson. And he's converted. I mean, it's just been unreal what he's done with his point production. Here's Iverson. Everybody clears out. He'll bring it up with 10 points. command look at him like a general out there he wants to be the commander now really learning how to play up on top three-pointer won't go for Nichols still Georgetown ball psychologically they needed that big win over Memphis to start to believe again Georgetown has lost three of their last four Big East games not only did they lose you and I saw them get blown out by Villanova they got blown out by Syracuse they look like a different team tonight Othello Harrington walks with it they really do. They look like they're in attacking mode. John's got them really playing well tonight to carry over from Saturday against Memphis. Iverson making Shepard work for everything just to get it across the timeline. And now Nichols picks up Allen. Allen's got to start creating shots for himself. Take the basketball, get him some screens, and try to deny him the ball. Nichols is a third Hoya. They've thrown out Ray Allen. Sheffer almost had it swiped by Iverson right in front of us. Now Allen finally is open. Missed the three. He'll keep it alive. With a long rebound by Allen, but he is 13th in the Big East in rebounding. Not bad for a guard. Also a great three-point shooter, shooting about 50% from three-point land. He's 0 for 2 tonight out there. 0 for 3 for the game. 
Trying to deny him the basketball, keeping it out of his hand. Iverson with a steal ahead to pay. Count. Oh, hello. Up, up, and away. They're rocking and rolling at the White House right now. The press just jumped up for joy for his alma mater. Iverson, four steals already. We're not even at the midway point of the first half. He's really attacking the ball. Look at him right there. Look at his eyes. Best defensive guard in the league. He had that to the leading score. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Page the rebound, a foul. Trying to get to that rebound. Rudy Johnson. They might want to take out Ray Allen for about a moment. We're going to watch Iverson right now. Look at him getting over the top. Look at him getting over the top of the screen. Very active, a deflection. And then he knows what to do once the deflection is grabbed. He kicks it out to his partner, to his sidekick. He says, take it away, Victor. Iverson doing a Ricky Henderson imitation so far tonight to go with 10 points as well. Ricky Henderson, I tell you, he stole a few bases in the time. <laughs> you look like a president candidate. I just turned around and looked at you. you know, I think you should be a politician. I think you should run in a primary. You got that look. You got that look. You as my campaign manager, I can't miss. I'll be your promotion guy. Othella Harrington, left hook. Oh, yes, getting Othella in bound. What a great first half performance so far by Georgetown. They're up 18. Knight with a finger roll, and finally, that slows down Georgetown momentarily. Followed by Ray Allen in the backcourt. They did a great job, the Huskies attacking the pressure in that sequence. Good ball movement, got the ball down to the gut of the defense. This is one great player, people. We're not seeing him right now, but Ray Allen is a superstar. There's Othello down in the boxes inside. Had 27 on Memphis and Lorenzen right. There he is with the little jump hook. A little bit Russell there. Uh -huh. little bit Ru but Russell, big, big friend of John Thompson. In fact, John was his caddy when John played with the Celtics. That's right. He'll back up. 9.25 and a half. All Georgetown so far. You always smell, though, we're going to see a run, a spurt like Connecticut get back in the stand. Williams strong. I tell you, Jerome taking it to the goal. Everybody's contributing. This is not a one dimensional team tonight. 18 points again. I mean, it starts with Iverson, but everybody's been contributing. Page, Harrington, Williams. And Look Iverson those hands. almost Look had another those. steal. Look at those hands. He's mad at himself. He wanted another one. Watch Jerome Williams right now. Going to take it right down the lane. Look at the big hole in the defense. There's the first step. Look at the explosive move by Jerome. Good time rebounder. He's a glass eater. Allen picked up by Harrington that time. Sheffer in traffic, nice lead for King, but he doesn't finish it off. Hayward out to Allen. Still Ray Allen scores. 0 for 5. I think Jim should take him out like he did against Villanova, even for 30 seconds, just to sit him down and bring him back in the game. Jim Calhoun, what a job. You talk about rebuilding a program. He's been in Frank Lloyd right there. He and that guy up in Massachusetts, what's his name? Oh, Calipari. Perry. Sheffer with a three. That'll help the cause. His second triple of the night. Sheffer with that big three. I promise to tell you tonight, I will not say that Connecticut should play Mass. I promise. I will not do that. <laughs> now that that's out of the way. And foul as Iverson was going to the hoop. What makes Allen Iverson so good, he's got a great first step. Look at him right here. Look at his head is up for you young people. See how he's not watching the basketball? Look at that first step. A little shake, a little bake, and take it right to the goal. Look at that first step. Wow. What a great first step. By the way, Lou Perkins, UConn's AD, and I walked in tonight together, and he said, how long will it take before Dick gets on us about <laughs> playing UMass? I said, I don't know. It'll happen in the first half. So it's out of Lou's benefit. 821 left in the half. Iverson, 11 on the night for Allen. I know one thing, they're close to signing a deal to play Kentucky to catch where you and I are going tomorrow. Not a bad gig, huh? We get to see number three UConn and number 11 Georgetown tonight in the second-ranked Kentucky riding the big 21-game winning streak tomorrow night at Rock. I think the best team in America. I really believe they're the best team in the land. And we did the only game they lost. White with the stick back off of this. To Heidi White right up on the glass, and here comes the pressure. There's a trail man. Reverse it. Ray's got to be active and wants the ball. Shepard, who's all the way in, he's got a chance for a three-point play. Shepard's going to have to try to take over with Ray Allen not being 
a part of the offense so far. Ray Allen's not being Ray Allen. Ray Allen's drifting right now. He's not being Ray Allen. Sheffra has played brilliantly in the first half. Iverson wants to make a big-time case for player of the year in the Big East. Well, he's certainly off a good start for it tonight. And the guy from Villanova, he's going to get some ballots as well by the name of Kittles. We see Kerry a couple times this year. As a matter of fact, Steve Lapis, Kerry Kittles head coach, will be joining us in this first half to talk about this matchup and the rest of the regular season of the Big East. That's coming up shortly. Iverson off the dribble. Knight with a rebound. Connecticut has not been able to make anything happen with their defense. That's usually a big weapon for them when they create offense off their defense. Now well, they've got to worry about now getting it down to single digits by halftime. It's still thrown it away. More with the turnover. Who over needs help smartly knew that he already had his dribble taken. He was smart right there. Williams, rather than throw the ball where his feet were in the backcourt, he made sure he Got across the midcourt line, planted, and then gave him the basketball. I like the way he's directing right now. I like the way he's like a director. Iverson's really learning how to play. So there's a difference between having great ability in numbers and learning how to play with other people. Five on the shot clock. Jerome walked with it. Georgetown hasn't had many turnovers, but that one will give it back to UConn when we come back. 7.04 to go first half. A 15-point Hoyle lead. 25 in the Big East is. Number three, UConn, fourth-ranked Villanova, Georgetown, Syracuse, and Boston College, all in the top 20. And along with us, head coach of the fourth-ranked Wildcats of Villanova, Steve Lapis, who's watching with some interest tonight. Steve. How you guys doing? We're doing pretty good. Hey, Steve, I want to ask you, number one, have you ever seen Connecticut in a situation where Allen's been so passive? Well, you know, it's one of those games on the road. Georgetown came out and really got amped kind of hard and I think they got caught on their heels a little bit but Connecticut I'm sure is going to settle down at some point in this game and, it's, and give a heck of a run. Well Iverson's got his fifth steal and his 13th point. I'll tell you they're a different team than they were against you. You guys did a great job. Brad and I had the game. You played that box and one on Iverson. Yeah we really did a good job on him that night. Well, you know the tempo wasn't like this. You know, they weren't turning us over and they're the kind of team when they turn you over and they get offensive rebounds, forget about it. Yeah, they got eight steals already tonight, Steve, and they're turning all of them into points. Well, this is the kind of pace that they like to have, and, and when, they're, when, they, when they do set up, if they get an offensive rebound, too, then they're really at their best. Hey, Steve, you're not cheering at all for Connecticut, are you? No. <laughs> we got a big game Sunday with Connecticut. The only chance we have to catch this, really, is if, they, is if Georgetown wins tonight. So it's, it's all in the league, but I got to say, I have a little interest for Georgetown. <laughs> We're only talking about a couple of weeks from the Big East Tournament. And the games remaining for the Wildcats, UConn, Boston College, and Georgetown. Not like, nothing like having three top 20s in there just to wrap it up, Steve. Yeah, we got, a tough, we got a tough ending, that's for sure, especially with two of them on the road and then the one at home in Connecticut. So we don't have anything easy coming our way. But you guys are really playing well the second half of the year, getting good production out of it. Well, Cornegay rebounded, but certainly Lawson has become a factor. Lawson has become a factor. You know what, Dick? Our three-point shooting has really picked up. And I'll tell you, that guy Kerry Kittles, well, I'll tell you, 25 a game the last six, seven games. Look out. Make your case for Kittles as player of the year. Go ahead. Make your case. It, but it, it, it is a case. I mean, here's a guy who's picking it up, playing his best now at the end of the year, playing great. He rebounds, he passes. He does everything. He starts the ball. He shields. He does everything there is to do. This guy, if you were playing UConn and with 523 left, first time Ray Allen scored, you'd take that, right? Yeah, well, that happens. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that in a second. Now, let me just get back to my play, my man Kittles here. He, he's not even being talked about. He was 23 and 3. He's had an unbelievable year. I don't think he gets talked about enough, to tell you the truth. Well, we're going to compare the stats of the three guys we're talking about right now as Othello Harrington picks up the foul. And here's the three guys, obviously, that are up for not only play of the year of the Big East, but who knows, maybe in all of college basketball when you throw Camby and Duncan in the mix. There's the numbers and how they compare, and there's the three pretty versatile players. And let me, let me just include one thing in there, Brad, is that in Kerry Kittle's statistics, the game against West Virginia where he played one minute, he pulled up late with Detroit. I mean, he's got a game in there where he didn't do anything. Hey, hey, Steve, I'd love to play for you. I tell you, Brad, I want to play for him. You guys, one unbelievable salesman. You're convincing me. He made my, he made my All-American team first team. Well, I hope so. 
You gotta watch him play though. He played this the other day, he makes every big shot, he's making steals, he throws the ball to launch. Hey, he's just a and he plays hard every single day. But all those guys, all those great players, they have they would be great. Rochevel Jones at the free throw line where he missed the first. I got a question for you. Break down Allen and break down Mr. Iverson for us. Take down their strengths and their weaknesses. Well, Iverson is the fastest human being that I've ever seen in any sport. <laughs> I've never seen anything like him, you know, that, that with the speed and the quickness, his ability to take over a game at the point guard spot from the scoring position. Ray Allen's the type of kid who does everything well, and he, and he lets the game come to him. He doesn't go crazy yet. All of a sudden, boom, he makes five, six baskets in a row. So they're both obviously great, great players, but both very different. There's the step to the baseline, that quickness that Steve's talking about. Out of what about my man Lawson? I mean, how about him? <laughs> Let's hear about Lawson for all, all Big East. Yeah, go for that one, too. Well, you know what? He's another guy. Since the first of the year, he's been going crazy. He's going to break the career shot block record of Villanova. He's scoring about 15. The games that he hasn't been in foul trouble, he's averaging 15 points and 8 rebounds a game. He's been great. And he maybe showed his best move of the year two weeks ago when we had you uh, playing Georgetown. There was a little mix-up. Al kind of gave him a little chase, and Jason kept his, uh, kept his cool and did not get involved. And uh, that's something that he's had hanging over his head since, really, Thanksgiving. Well, you know what I told him? I, I, gave, I gave him a B for that move. I would have given him an A if he ran to the bench. He, he backpedaled. He backpedaled, so I only gave him a B. I wanted an A, which is run to the bench. Well, again, you take a look at the Big East 7 and the Big East 6. If UConn should stumble tonight, that does leave the door open for maybe the Wildcats to uh, at least tie them. And, uh, Steve, we're going to wish you the best on your week upcoming. Thanks for being with us. Nice that you have a, a week off with a big game this weekend. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you having me. All Thanks. right. Thanks a lot, Steve. Enjoy your recruiting up there in Maine. Thank you. Steve Lappin is the head coach of the fourth-ranked team in the country, the Wildcats of Villanova. They'll get a look at third-ranked UConn coming up on Sunday. But right now, it's UConn looking at 11th-ranked Georgetown and looking down the barrel. They trail by 14 with 4-10 left first half. they got to get a little spurt here and get this down to 9 or 10. Nice Moore got pass. it right back and got it tonight. That's a chance for a three-point play for Travis Knight. That's tremendous basketball right there. Very unselfish, moving the ball. That's why they're 14-0. They play as a unit. They play as a team. Right now, look at the movement of the basketball. King with that good move inside. They ultimately get the ball over to Knight, and he converts. Travis, former Utah High School Player of the Year, seven footer, caps off the three point play. I'll tell you one thing: if you can play, they're going to find you. Connecticut, you look at their roster. I mean, Israel, Utah, Global, South Carolina, they go all over. Great recruiter, Howie Dickerman on that sideline. Just got a commitment from Rich Hamilton. Everybody wanted him. Verbally, he committed. He's from Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and he is going to be a heck of a player in a Husky uniform. Well, remember, this is a team that in past years has had the Danielle Marshalls and the Donnie Marshalls, and now Ray Allen is their leader and their top scorer tonight struggling though against the georgetown defense nickel inside the williams nice penetration i love dribble penetration attacking bringing the ball inside iverson's got his sixth steal if you don't step to the basketball he's gonna get double figures this year today in steals he might end up with a triple double the way he's working on it he's got 13 points and six steals Looking for a pick, goes inside to Harrington with a nice pass, and Othello finishes it off. That's what they have to do, a little two-man game. They both got to be involved, get Harrington some touches. 15-point Georgetown lead. They have dominated this first half. I've never seen Connecticut really struggle like they are trying to attack this pressure. It looks like, looks like there's seven gray jerseys out there. Normally, 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 deep. Brad, normally they attack and they finish and they finalize and convert with a jam and take you out of that pressure. Seven on the shot clock. Out of three. Going to have to hustle with a shot. Shepard got it away and got it. Huge bucket by Deron Shepard. Deron Shepard was having a strong first half. It's had to be him. Jump stop. Iverson got in traffic and had to kick it back out to Nichols. Took a shot in the face. Buddy Valentine will stop play to make sure Alan Iverson's all right. To clear the tears from his eyes with 2.24 left in the first half. 
And a timeout with that 2.24 remaining in the first stanza. Allen Iverson getting it done as a score, but more importantly, six steals on the night already. This team was blue Alabama back in the 56 era. Trying to pass it inside uh, Harrington. That's what UConn needs is some Georgetown turnovers. They have not had many so far tonight. They need some big baskets out of Allen, some big dunks, give them a little momentum. They got a bunch of fans that came down here with a charter. Allen on the baseline with an air ball. King. Still up for grabs. The last touch when by Kirk King. When your star is struggling the way Allen is struggling, it affects everybody else basically on a club. They really start to feel the pressure. When your leader's not leading, and right now the difference in this game, this guy with the rock in his hands, he has been leading Mr. Iverson. He has taken charge and command here tonight. The only thing that has kept UConn from being totally out of the game is Shepard. Well, you mentioned he hit that big shot. They're down 15. He knocks down that big three to get it down to 12. Iverson's going to let that shot clock work down. We're under a minute and a half game clock, and now under 10 on the shot clock. Learning to manage the clock, utilize the clock. Sizes up Ricky Moore and carries it over. Hey, if you're going to use the clock, that's the way to use it. I mean, he gets in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He converts at the end of the shot clock. Sheffer the dish to King. Oh, nice play right there by Sheffer. What a game he's having. 43-31 with a minute left. Three assists and 14 points for Shepard. This game is long from over. Long from over 12 up because Georgetown is not going to be able to play much better than the way they played here in the first half. As Clark Kellogg would tell you, Connecticut's a team that has spurtability. Spurtability! <laughs> spurtability! That's too many syllables! And Chris and Clark will be talking about that on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, which is less than 40 seconds from now. Iverson thought about another outside jumper, now lost the handle, he walked with it. They got a chance right now to get it under 10 if they can knock down a three. He knows he made a mistake there, and as I mentioned, Chris and Clark coming up. Showdown in Conference USA. Alonzo visiting Cleveland. Special K's inside scoop. It's all in the Della Fawcett halftime report. It is 32 seconds from now. So this is a little bit of an opportunity. They could get it to single digits before halftime if they hit a three. They take a 10-point disadvantage right now. They can be happy with it the way it has gone. They were down by as many as 18. Got to be careful you don't get stripped right here. That's right. I wouldn't want to be Ricky Moore out there dribbling that ball. Playing right with now. that ball. They're going to double up. Got to find that open man. And almost threw it away. And he did. King steps out of bounds. You can almost anticipate a turnover was coming. He was not really handling the ball effectively in that situation. Take a look right now, possessions, touches, and points. We look right here, Allen not effective at all. On the other side, we look at Iverson, 34 possessions. He's touched the ball 31 times, he's converted to 15 points. He's been definitely a primetime primary guy here tonight. He's winning a primary. He's way up on top. He's running away with the charts. Two and a half seconds left in the half, and look out for Iverson. He is a master of the long ball if they get it in his hands. And now they're changing up bodies. John Thompson moves in to Obu. And O'Fellow will sit. He's got basically all his guards out there, but Jerome Williams set to throw it in. He's going for some real speed. Got it. Well, Iverson oh, it in. It over. The other way it'll go. Shot at the buzzer by Jones. Is off the mark. But the Hoyas have been on the mark tonight. They bottled up Ray Allen. Only two points for him. 15 for Iverson. And it's the Hoyas at intermission 43-31. We go to our Delta Foss at halftime report. 3 to 31 on our primetime primary tonight. We expected a two-man runoff, but right now it's Allen Iverson, and he's running unopposed, Dick Vitale, the way he's playing. I'll tell you, what a great performance in the first half. Not only defensively, offensively, got everybody else involved as well. Was so explosive. And Ray Allen, his offense non-existent. Only two points in intermission for Ray. Well, they got everybody checking him, rotating a lot of bodies on him, and really has frustrated him. One for nine in the first half, and really has been very passive. 
it was not for Jerome Shepard, Dick, it would be really a tough time for UConn. He went 5 of 7 from the field. The rest of the team was 7 out of 20. Well, you know, Shepard played brilliantly. Also, another statistic that jumps at me, 37% leading the Big East defensively is Connecticut tonight. The field goal percentage defensively. Tonight, Georgetown shoots 58% in the first half. Personally, I think we're going to see a Connecticut run. I think this game is going to be tougher and closer than a lot of the fans. I see some celebrating going on by Georgetown people. <laughs> hey, they got a great team they're playing here tonight. And 12 at halftime is nothing to that. Six deals to go with his 15 points for Iverson and for Ray Allen. That is it off of first 20 minutes as you'll ever see from him. He is very capable of having a very bad first half. He was like the invisible man. I mean, he wasn't the explosive guy like Iverson, but I got a feeling the real Ray Allen is going to step up here in the second half. You know that Jim Calhoun is certainly hoping so. A 23-game winning streak, a school record for men's basketball for UConn on the line. We say it that way because we know that the Lady Huskies had a run for a national championship to produce more wins in a row, but they've won 14 in a row in the Big East. They have not trailed at halftime since the Iowa game, November 24th. They lost that game in overtime. That was a heartbreaking loss. Kingsbury hit a big three at the end of regulation. Why does everyone want to rub my ball, Dole? Valentine just comes here and rubs my ball. You gotta love it when the referee comes oh. up. Get a good, good luck from you. <laughs> Teddy D. A zone right now. Look at the zone right now by Georgetown. Shepard got Iverson in the air, threw it up there, hoping to draw a foul and didn't. And Williams stepped on the baseline. If Connecticut's going to get back in the game, we look at a four-minute segment after halftime. I've always said it's very big when a team is struggling. they got to come out and put a spurt on. And as you said, Clark would say spurtability. they got to make that happen right now, Connecticut. And their defense has got to step it up and create some turnovers. They haven't been in single digits. Well, they throw another one away what they wanted to do. 13 Husky. Oh, nobody stopped. Iverson. Oh, up, up, and away, Jam City. Nobody stopped the ball, Brad Nessler. Nobody stopped the ball. That's a no-no, especially with an explosive guard like Iverson. you got to jump in front of him. you got to make him pick up the dribble. you got to make him get the ball out of his hand. Time out. Iverson with yet another steal, and he took it the distance, and he shows the spring. He's got 17. Ray Allen against Allen Iverson, no contest. Iverson, 17 points, going to the free throw line to try to cap off a three-point play after the monster jam, after the steal. I think it's been a total lemon ever between the two in terms of a, a mismatch, a no contest. It would be like a beauty contest, bringing out Roseanne and going head to head <laughs> with my escort last week, Valeria. Yeah. I mean, that's a mismatch. You were definitely an over your head, the escort, weren't you? I was an overachiever big time. And I know you were eating your heart out watching. But no, your wife is so beautiful. That's right. She that's told me that if I kept my arm around somebody up there with the microphone as long as you did, <laughs> it would be the end of our marriage. <laughs> my wife's very understanding. Yeah. And a foul on Bubakar Owl. I can't remember watching a Ray Allen play where I've seen him disappear from the action in a big-time game like he is tonight. Tonight, he's a very ordinary player. He's an ordinary player on the floor. Shepard's not, and that's helping UConn, or they'd be dead in the water. He's got another three, his fourth of the night. He's not ordinary today. You got that right. The runs four for four outside the arc. So yes. He's keeping them afloat here a little bit. He has such maturity he brings to the table. He's 24 years of age. He's played over in Israel, played in the professional league. Former MVP of the Israeli team. Setting a 1-4 for a little isolation one-on-one. -on -one. And a few Iversons missed. They gotta get some threes for Ray Allen. He can shoot the three. He's gonna get some looks. They immediately ran two guys at Ray Allen. Another steal for Iverson. He's got a trailer. He's got a trailer. Page. Williams will have another chance. Jerome Williams, a big-time rebounder right on the glass. And look at them hustling, scrap. They're trapping, they're hustling, they're scrapping. There's a steal. And he comes up with a steal. Look at that hustle. Look at that dish. Williams underneath. 
The little ragged no fellas says I'm a senior. Hold on. The senior John Wade just put his arms out, a big wingspan. Said, bring it out. And the crowd loves it. As well they should. Their team up 14 with 17 41 left. Iverson from downtown. Not a good shot right there. Shot selection not good. Now let's see, Connecticut hasn't had really any fast break opportunities. Johnson dishes off the night. And he's gonna go to the free throw. You don't see Ray Allen out in transition. You don't see him running up and down the court. We went and found out. We talked to some people about him physically, and they say he's 100% okay. I think he's thinking and thinking and thinking, as opposed to just reacting and playing. This is one beautiful young man, both as a player and as a person. I had the pleasure to speak at a banquet when he was honored in high school, and you could tell then he came from good family, just a great kid, his mom, a beautiful lady. Travis Knight with seven points. Ray Allen captained the World University Games gold medal team in Japan over the summer, so used for his leadership qualities as well as his prowess on the court. But tonight, it's not his night so far. His team trails by 12 with 17, 25 to play. And what a team that was. Iverson was on that club. Kittles was on that team. Duncan, Lorenzen White, Ron Kruger coached them. He'd like to have those guys down in Gatorland, <laughs> Florida. Got it. Everybody is contributing. Everybody's stepping up. They're playing with emotion. They're playing with feeling. See, race passing and just drifting. Not trying to make anything happen. Trying to really take the basketball and dominate. Showing that Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan kind of ability. When a team is on a rope, Michael just steps up big time with the ball. Out of the corner, Johnson. Allen had a half a look, works for a full look, and had a block. One for ten from the floor. Page for three. Got it! Mr. Nestler, they are on fire. They are on fire. Defensively, offensively, everybody's contributing. It's Hoya hysteria. Page cut off on the baseline. Al, who had the steal, will try it again. Making up. He's a fifth option. Took that home. Gonna have to take a timeout. Yes, he can't wait for TV timeouts. He needs one right here. <laughs> 55 to 36, Georgetown. 1601 left. And if you're at US Air Arena, hide your wallet. The way Georgetown's stealing things tonight. Okay. Iverson's the head theft. They got another theft down the road by the name of Johnny Rhodes in College Park, Maryland. But tonight it's all Georgetown. They're all stepping in the passing lane. Hey, Al, everybody's contributing. Georgetown thievery. And Bubakar Al, who started that with a steal, finishes it with his second field goal of this half. And there's the turnovers. Georgetown has four 16 of them and turned it into 26 points in a hurry. Is more now the diaper dandy from out of Georgia playing a point against Iverson. I get the ball away from him. Shepard's been the only offense tonight. Williams had a hand on it, lost it to Moore. Moore again, partially blocked by Harrington. Out to Nichols, he collides with Shepard. Nice play by Shepard to go around his back. King flies in off the glass. That was a great play by Shepard. He utilized the behind-the-back dribble, not for show, but for advantage, to get to another spot on the floor. Not to be Hollywood, not to be hot dogish. Iverson packs it into the belt. Blocked by Knight. Ray Allen comes out of the heat with it. Trying to run, but he runs right into three gray jerseys again, and another steal by Iverson. And he throws it away. Allen Iverson with that one hand. Cradle it and take it to the goal. Eight steals. 19, 20 points. Dominating. Just absolutely playing a dominating game from the perimeter. Talk about college basketball. You better have great guard play if you want to win. And today, Georgetown's getting great guard play. Matches the biggest lead for Georgetown. They are up 19. I can't believe I'm even saying that. Well, Connecticut shell shot because I think all the other players are feeling the effect of their star becoming an invisible man. 
the big of Connecticut, Jim Calhoun, what success. Last year goes to the final eight. There he is coaching his star. He said, Ray, we need you, big fella. You got to step it up a little. He goes to the final eight, gets beat by UCLA in a shootout. I believe it was 102-96, a great game. Then he went to the final eight with Christian Layton. Remember, beat him at the buzzer. Right. I believe it was 1990. That's the only thing he doesn't have on his resume, Jim Calhoun, the final four. Wow. And then once he gets that trip, you want the other. You want the gold prize. You don't want to go to the final four and just be there. You want to cut the nets down. Well, you know, at 24 and 1, they were thinking top seed, and the tournament rolls around. But that, of course, could be in danger very much with the regular season not over. The Big East tournament in New York, just around the corner. And there's a look at John Thompson. What a job he has done here at Georgetown in rebuilding his program when he arrived, came out of St. Anthony's High School stepped in one of the guys that has been able to make that transition from high school to the collegiate ranks king high off the glass with the car out high on the glass for the rebound i was done a nice job tonight he's got nine points he's done a good job on the boards and he's come up with some key steals why did he beat me there with you i was just going to come out with that i was going to praise out hey Al, i was going to praise you but now slip beat me to the punch yeah 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 into the lineup Look at Jahidi White, nice screen and roll, but he doesn't catch the ball. Page came out of there with it, though. He lays a, keeps it alive. He lays a mean screen, Jahidi White. Six on the shot clock. Remember, they haven't gotten a shot away. There wasn't an official change of possession. Al with two on the shot clock. Who the guy Al becoming a real primary option on primary week. He's five for five from the floor. I chuckle a little bit because Wubakar came in averaging 4.8 points a game. The lead is 20. It's a different team than we saw wow. against Villanova. I guess so. A different team. They got blown out by Syracuse. Sheffer with a quick move. Page trying to cut him off, picks up the foul. When you think about it, St. John's beat them with a great performance by Hamilton and Lopez, and it's hard to believe that St. John's is where they are, but they have the ability to beat a team like Georgetown. we got St. John's next week. Iverson had 39 in that game, but it was not an effective 39, really. Exactly. When he gets numbers like that, that means everybody else is not involved, and you don't get the balance. Sheffer, another three. Sheffer is stepping up big time. He needs a little help from his friend. He's got to say, Ray, you got to help me out. Dickie's five for five from three-point lane. And he's handled the ball really with confidence. 20 points for Sheffer. If it wasn't for Sheffer. They'd have called this thing off on a TKO already. Iverson off the glass. A little bit of everything. Using the glass really well. That was the method utilized by UCLA on the John Wooden. Use that glass. A lot of players don't use it. Take advantage of it. Allen finally got a square. Oh, hello, Ray Allen, superstar. He finally arrives. He comes to town here. The first three of the night. 39th straight game. Ray's had at least one. So a streak stays alive. Shoots about 50% for three-point land. Iverson had it stripped by Sheffer on a bounce. Still Georgetown ball. 12-36. Remaining in the half. Don't forget, coming up, Hoops on ESPN2 tomorrow. On the new St. John's visits Miami. We aforementioned St. John's Club. And then UMass Rhode Island, the number one team in the country. You look at Marcus Camby again. 9.30 tomorrow. That's a twin bill on the deuce. That's my player of the year, Marcus Camby. He's having a phenomenal year. What a job they did to go to Virginia Tech and to blow them out. But they had hokey hysteria going crazy down there. Too much Mr. Camby on the inside. Five for Al Sabin. Well, went tonight anyway. Good hustle by Al. He's holding his head saying Al as he comes out of the crowd. Alec. Back-to-back -back triples for Ray. He's capable, very explosive, very capable. Now Thompson says 20-second timeout. Let's nip it in the bud right here. We did not see the real Ray Allen in that first half. It went from 20 down to 13 in a hurry. Brad, he's been standing around too much. Good players are very active. They move well without the ball. He's starting to now go to designated spots looking for a shot. I thought in the first half he became very stationary, very invincible, invisible. He didn't want a lot of contact. He's got to be able to pounce the ball, rotating a lot of people up. As I said, the first half he could have taken a Polaroid up. We didn't have to have a camera. He wasn't moving at all. He was the Kodak man in the first half. <laughs> Kodak man snapping pictures. He's watching the Iverson show. 
Three straight three-pointers by UConn, though. Shepard with one, Allen with back-to-backers. And that's what they've done well this year, shoot the three. Connecticut's done all things well this year. When you really think of it, they have done everything well all year long. Here comes Ricky Moore. And he'll go to the free throw line. Tough luck right there. He gets a conversion. He goes to the line. Does Rizzo give you some momentum? Give you a little lift. A lot of time left in this game. Look at Kevin McGill. Look at Kevin. He still looks like he can play. They can use him there with the Timberwolves. Come on, Kevin. Don't sit in the office. Hey, if I owned that club, I'd say, McHale, I don't need you to sit there with a pen. I look at Jerry West. He can stroke the jumper. Are you kidding me? He was my Shoe. favorite player when I was a kid. Oh, he was a super. Gene Shue sitting next to him. We got all the brass out tonight. Well, Iverson gives away some height to Jerry West, but uh, I don't know. When he starts shooting like Jerry West, I really think he's something special. Tonight, he has definitely been a special player again. The one thing about Jerry West when he played, every time he shot the ball, I always felt it it's had going a chance in. to go That's in. That's right. There he is. And what a hard-working administrator. One of the hardest-working guys who's a Hall of Famer. A lot of guys who don't get those titles and they're going to sit in the office. This guy is out evaluating. And, of course, he was the leader of that Laker team that is being brought up so often now because of the Bulls making a run at the best regular season record in NBA history. And Jerry was on that club along with Wilt Chamberlain, Pat Hairston, Gail Goodrich, and Jim McMillan, Jim McMillan. Jim McMillan. Thomas Jefferson, Columbia University, Thomas Jefferson High School, Bella Harrington, the Miss and Shepard the rebound. I like Shepard's ability to rebound, handle the ball. And he comes up with the offensive foul because Williams and Page just wouldn't let him breathe down the sideline. They beat him to the spot. They beat him to the sideline. And the Hoya fans like it. Good looking guy. There's Jim Gallon working that sideline. Did a great job at Northeastern University. He and John Calipari have brought so much excitement to New England. So an opportunity goes by the boards there to get it down near single digits for UConn. They trail right now by 13. Two-three zone right now. Going to try to make it shoot over the top. Nichols likes that three-point line. Hit one earlier, but he's missed his last two. Now UConn needs to play smart. They're trying to deny the ball to Allen. See, he's, he's got to run people into screens. He's got to get a little active without the ball instead of just standing. Nice dish inside more to Knight. And Knight fouled as he went up. Now, Jordan. let's see. Is that a shooting foul? Yes, it is. Look at John working that sideline. His kids like to take the ball to the sideline. You can fan or you can funnel. Right now, they're fanning the ball to the sideline. Now, watch them. They'll pin them right on the sideline. They'll jump in and take the charge. See, good defense right here. Beating them to the spot. Look at Victor Page. He says, I might be a type of dandy, but I can play some defense. Jerome Williams let him up that sideline. Travis Knight. He's got a nice touch for a big guy. Ten points on the night for Travis. And seven rebounds. A lot of winning. This team, these seniors have won more games than any group at Connecticut. Knight gets a breather. It's amazing, you know, when Allen came in the league with Shepard, was the rookie of the newcomer of the year, the year he was a freshman. Well, it's an 8-0 run, Dick. And as we approach the midway point of the second half, it's down to an 11-point ball game. A little concern right now by John Thompson on that sideline. 20-point lead is dwindled down to 11. 61-50, Hoya. Cut down to 11 by a good run by UConn. As Dick said at halftime, you know they're going to have at least one in there. They spoke, put together spoke, eight straight. Spoke to Bob Huggins today. You see that St. Louis score. And we got him Thursday against Louisville. I tell you, he told me his team's better offensively than the team was in 92. But that team was better defensively with Van Exo. Blunt. Nichols gave up an open shot for that. Nice baseline drive by Nichols. Ray Allen will bring it up now. Takes it himself. That's what they got to do. They got to really let him handle the ball a little bit. Try to create some shots. He has that ability about him. He's hit 
his last three shots in a row. And halfway through the second half, it's 63-52, Georgetown by 11. They need a couple of stops here and get this down to single digits. And they can put a lot of pressure on Georgetown, getting a little tight. Page had an open look, packs it into Ophella. Nice, when they get him involved, the big guy. You look at his numbers, only averaging eight shots a game. I believe he's got to get at least 12 shots a game. Jones high off the glass. Williams goes up for the rebound. And as he goes down hard, they call him for travel. Jones has got an ankle injury. A dollar storyline tonight. UConn's 18 turnovers have become 28 Georgetown points in a hurry. Ray Allen, you see his numbers way down from normal. And eight of the 14 steals are Allen Iverson's. Good for 22 points. Talked about Jones there, the freshman. He had an ankle injury. They're trying to use him today. Look at his Sheffer. Still hasn't missed outside the arc. He's six for six. And he's got that great rotation. Finally getting down. It's down to ten. Six three-pointers for Durant Sheffer, and good for 23 points. And they're starting to slow Georgetown to play a little bit more five-on-five. He got a better shot against him five on five than opening the court. Now, for 15. Didn't get the roll. Williams got the tip. Roll Williams really active. And played that point really well. The pressure. Nobody blocked out when he lost to in college basketball. Block it out. Williams working on a double double. That was his 12th point. He's got nine boards. Shepard, that's been his hot spot out there. It was a fishing hole. He'd have a whopper, but he fed inside tonight. Got a whopper. We got a little goldfish with that little pass. <laughs> we got a little goldfish, a little chippy inside. Made that great look. Jeffrey, though, you look at his numbers. Six for six. I mean, that is unbelievable shooting. We've seen some great three-point shooting recently. I was on a game when Barry knocked down nine for Georgia Tech. And hey, what about the performance of Marbury? 25 points. You told me not one turnover. Not a turnover against Wake Forest Saturday. Nichols for a trip. Got it. One productivity of getting out of Nichols off the bench. He does a great job in getting the baseline. Now they play off him, and he knocks down the three. That was a sobering three-pointer by Nichols, his second triple of the night. Now it's back up to a 13-point lead. Well, Nichols answered two times in a row. Runs by Connecticut. Allen working one-on-one -on -one against Al, but Williams picks him up on the switch. Williams did a great job stepping out. There's a walking violation. Shepard. You saw a little bit of turnover trouble mixed in with the excellent night he's had elsewhere. Watch him right here defending Allen. Now watch as he takes the ball over the screen. Now look at Williams pop out. Great job. See Williams? He stepped out. He said, no, Ray, I know you're a superstar. I can't let you make the turn. I can't let you get the turn, Ray. The 19th Connecticut turnover. See a lot of Georgetown fans, they keep looking at the clock. They, keep, they want that clock to keep ticking and ticking. Iverson, what an adjustment in midair that was. He didn't get it, but... He hung there long enough to have about three looks at the basket. The one area where Georgetown has excelled, they have really negated the transition game of Connecticut. Think, Aaron, of, think about how many opportunities Connecticut's had in transition. Not many. Harrington was on Ray Allen there. They had everybody on him. Everybody except John Thompson's guarded Ray Allen at one time or another tonight. Well, I think John guarded him when he was coming out of the locker room, and maybe he's intimidated him, scared him a little bit. Al almost came up with another steal. And now Allen's double team. Three on the shot clock. Knight's going to have to push one. Sheffer, fresh 35. Perfect. Not anymore. And here we go. Al with that big rebound. Al and Williams have been so active up on a glass. And look at the crowd. They love it. They love it. The Hoyas are going wild. The president's standing up at the White House. Hillary's standing up. Everybody's going bananas. Nice push out by Ophella to Nichols. Had an open shot. Iverson will take it instead. Air ball pulled off the backside by Knight. Last three shots he's taken have not been good shots. Shepard, length of the court, left hand, blocked by Harrington. Now it's Iverson alone. He'll get a good shot right here. He'll get a good shot right here. Look at that bounce. Like a slow, like a big ball. This is a lever. Boom, bang. Right to the glass. Bingo, bango, bongo. It was down at 10. Now it's back to 15. So explosive. I find it mind-boggling to believe that this club has been blitzed several times. 
Jeff Deaton, the blitz rush down. Iverson's on his average. He has 24 points tonight. That's top for the Big East. Well, as you said earlier, they haven't been beaten on this floor. Allen trying to feed it inside, and Nichols, a steal, trying to call a timeout as he slid out of bounds. Heads up play, but Gary couldn't get those hands up quick enough. Last time the club was 14 and zip like they were was 1985. The Redmen with Chris Mullen were 14 and 0, and they were beaten and finished, as you told me earlier today, 15 and 1. That's kind of second's team. That was the best start in the history of the Big East. It's been tied by UConn, but it is in some serious danger with 544 left. And that was the proudest moment of the Big East. Those three teams in 1985 went to the Final Four in Lexington, Kentucky, where you and I will be tomorrow. And beautiful Rupp Arena with tradition and blue and white. And we'll see the denim. And speaking of Final Four teams, remember Steve Lapis who joined us in the first half. His team looking on with a great deal of anticipation of this game because if Georgetown holds on to win, then UConn and Villanova meet this Sunday, and that would be a chance to tie at 14 and 2 in Big East play. And who knows? Maybe that's a top spot in a regional, a number one seed. You never know what's lying out there. Of course, the Big East tournament's a couple of weeks from Wednesday, starting at the Garden. A lot of games still to play. Shot clock violation because he didn't make contact with the rim. He hit the backboard, but it must hit the rim. So all of a sudden, this, what would be an upset, taking on many proportions tonight. It could have a huge effect uh, not only the Big East, but the NCAA tournament as well. Fifth-ranked Kansas and Nebraska yet to come tonight on our Big Monday presented by Bud Light. And then our triple header capped off with Colorado State at New Mexico. That's at midnight. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, a USA Arena in Landover, where Georgetown has led by as many as 20 in this half. And this guy's been the catalyst. He started the whole thing going. And the night began. He was dominating right out of the gate. And the little guy, Allen Iverson, is a giant with the balls in his hands. And he has struggled big time, Mr. Allen. Ten points for Ray Allen. Allen Iverson, 24, going to go one-on-one -on -one with Ricky Moore. Kicks it out to Nichols for three. Got it. I'll tell you, Nichols now living up to that reputation when he came out of high school. An outstanding three-point shooter. He's starting to step up and really be a positive force off the bench. Eight straight points now for Georgetown, just when UConn had cut the lead down to ten. Four thirty-two left. Bryce John's team really building on that big win over Memphis. Talking to Bob Huggins today, he said, let me tell you, that's got to be impressive because Memphis has got one dynamite starting five. They got 57 in that game between Iverson and Harrington, who dominated Lorenzen Wright. Ray Allen will try to at least somewhat subdue the Georgetown crowd that's had plenty to cheer about. But that won't happen either. Allen on a rebound off of an Allen miss. Showing that he's human. Showing that he's just a human being. Gonna have a bad day. We've all had bad days in our life. I've had a lot of bad days. Ray will not soon forget this one, though. He's to play a big role in player of the year as well. You're not kidding. Does it become Iverson and Kittles for that honor now? Ray Allen has the night going the way it has been. Five on the shot clock and a foul to boot. Just when they were playing good enough defense that it would have taken a quick shot by Nichols. They got that little rest now, and Villanova gets ready for the matchup this weekend against Connecticut. You know, Steve Lapis brings up a good point. We touched on it a couple of weeks ago when you consider Kerry Kittle's stats and that he just played a couple of minutes in that West Virginia game before he was hurt. You think about what could have been for him statistically had it not been for that game. I'll tell you, he's really convincing us. See, he's worked on our mind. He achieved his goal today. He's got his goal. Lapis, you're an unbelievable PR guy. Scores at 10.30 and 50 past every hour on ESPN, and our score is all in Georgetown's favor, 75-57. Allen over out, got it. See, that's Ray Allen, a little creativity, a little dribble move, a little quickness off the dribble, stop, shoot the jumper. 
15-point Hoyle lead. Iverson had a funny bounce and just saved that from going into the backcourt. Oh, look at this. Give it up. Give it up. threw it away. Allen and Shepard bring it up together. And Allen missed a layup. Double figures on the board with 11 to go with his 12 points. He's got those long arms. Great option to have in your repertoire rebounder of his ability. Jones picks up the foul. Hey, hey Brad, I'll tell you one thing. The Nestle Vital Index has to come out today because RPI came out with their <laughs> ratings. They got the ACC number one, the Big Eight number two, the Big Ten three, SEC four, and they got the Big East five. Forget about it. Nestle Vital Index, Big East number one. Oh, what do you oh, think? What a running mate. Hey, I want to run with you. Got a shot? I think we're ready. That, that might be Al Gore's idea, that sign. <laughs> I'll tell you this, we'll, we'll get Bob Dole in trouble if you I and I hook up. We'll be great. At least we'll be the loudest team. <laughs> Boy, would they ever. That was a year ago today. And President Clinton probably watching tonight. His alma mater, Georgetown, in command, 75-60. It was great to have him with us last year. We hope for more of the same this year, but uh, there are some busy things on the presidential docket i'm sure i'll tell you unbelievable you talk about the president coming out i know you and i were you know not many times you get a chance to meet the president well, he wants to balance the budget and uconn would like to balance the scoreboard right now but i think they're running out of time and fella harrington calls a timeout as he's double teamed with 247 left I think they got a five-second violation. Yes, they did. Five-second violation because, remember, you can drop the ball to the deck, and there's no count, but if you just hold the ball, the count is intact. And that five-second call was before Othello could get those two hands up to get the timeout. Now, UConn came in as the number one three-point shooting team in the Big East. They're going to need that and a whole bunch more here in the next two minutes. And they can't let the clock run down to five seconds before they take a shot. Georgetown really a game plan defensively executed to perfection. They made this guy struggle all night long. They made Ray Allen just become another player tonight. And Al and company beating UConn players to the loose ball. That's been the story of the night all, on, all night long, too. UConn has only shot 41% from the field, and they have 20 turnovers. Both those statistics are very unlike the Huskies. They're unusual. When you look at their numbers, their numbers have been so impressive all year long. I'll tell you one thing. They're not going to hang their hats down. They're going to come back and regroup. If they don't make a comeback and win this game, which looks like unlikely right now, Georgetown just looks like they're not going to be denied tonight. As we said, Jim Calhoun's team has not trailed at halftime since November 24th. They lost that Iowa game in overtime. They trailed tonight 43-31 at the break, and they, quite frankly, have not been able to close that gap in this second half. The closest to, they got was 10. They're trying to invite him to a traffic area and keep the ball out of his right hand. See, they wanted to bounce it with the left. Nichols weaves through traffic. We're down to 147 as Nichols walks with it. Benny Valentine, we got a big fool. The big zebras in town tonight with Wilmer and certainly with Valentine. And Jimmy Burr. And the hustle on the inbound. Got to give the zebras an A tonight. Done an excellent job. Shepard. Oh, here comes the chant. I knew we are going to hear this one. Overrated. Overrated. You know you're going to hear that. Overrated. 136 left here. Let's check in with Ron Franklin and Alan Fieldhouse. Ron. Fifth break, Kansas Roy Williams is smiling because he has one of the best points in the country. Junior guard Chuck Vaughn is the total package and is the Jayhawks leader in offense, defense, as well as emotion. Nebraska, Kansas next. Thank you, Ron Franklin. 15 point Georgetown lead, and Iverson just had things now. He's got 26. I love the way he leans and the way he extends with his body when he goes to the basket. Boy, is the Big East tournament in New York going to be something fun. I can't wait for that. Look at the crowd. Give him a great hand. Really give him a great hand. No one's been able to go undefeated in the Big East since Dave Gavin, who deserves all the credit for putting this league together in 1979 when he created this giant basketball. It's not going to happen in 95-96 either because UConn's 
perfect 14 and oh is going to be a 14 and one in about 32 seconds so forget about the 23 game winning streak it will come to an end and forget the fact that georgetown has been beaten by uconn five straight times including three a year ago well, he's trying to work to straight the crowd now, I was saying. He wants to work to straight the crowd. He knows the bus driver ran the warm up the bus, baby. He knows this one is history for Mr. Secretary of State. I mean, are you kidding me? I was Secretary of State? Wow! Would we be in trouble? I'm only kidding you, Chris. Georgetown will be 14 and 0 at home this year. This will be their 16th straight win at U.S. Air Arena. They'll go to 22 and 5 and 11 and 4 in the Big East 7. Hey, what do you think about those ratings? It blows my mind. I don't know the RPI. What computer are they using as we look at some of the numbers here? About They're using that same computer that lost to uh, Kasparov in the chess. Uh, Tournament, yeah, I, I saw that, right? Casper up one for one thousand dollars. See, I checked other things other than sports pages. There you go. But I mean, ACC, Big Eight, Big Ten, SEC, ahead of the Big East this year. No way. The Nestle Vital Index comes out on Monday as well, and the Big East is number one. I don't care what computer they use. Final seconds from Landover. <laughs> Basket that really does not matter at all. Carson flies in for his first bucket of the game. We've had so many issues this week in basketball. One issue, I did the Maryland game yesterday. Dwayne Simpkins is out because he didn't play parking fines. About $2,000, and certainly you don't condone that. It's a lack of discipline. But I think you could help solve something like that if you allow the kids today to earn some money as Iverson comes out to a big ovation. Look at Allen. Look at Allen. He deserves Get more hugs. Get more squeezes. Come on. You deserve more, Allen. You're the king of the town tonight. Big East Rookie of the Year last year and Defensive Player of the Year. Will he repeat the Defensive Player of the Year honor and add Player of the Year to that long list? Who knows? Ray Allen, he might have seen that honor go by the boards tonight. That's not a bad night for a normal player, but Ray Allen's not a regular player. He is not a normal player. He's a great kid and a great player, and he'll bounce back. He's a superstar. But continue with my point, I'd love to see the players get room board books tuition and a stipend of at least $100 to $150 so that kid like a Simpkins doesn't have to reach out to somebody to loan him the money. Jones, just before the buzzer, doesn't matter. All George down. Final from U.S. Air Arena, the Hoya snap. The 23 game winning streak of the Huskies in their 14 0 run of the Big East with a 77 65 victory. For Dick Vitale and our entire ESPN group, Brad Nessler saying so long. The Landover, let's head back to Chris Fowler and Clark Kellogg. And then we turn it over to Mr. Frank Fallon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Meadowlands for tonight's NCAA National Championship game between the Syracuse Orange Men and the Kentucky Wildcats. And now, let's meet the starting lineup. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 30, Todd Bergen. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'4 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 23, Derek Anderson. For Syracuse at forward, a 6'8 senior from Rochester, New York, number 44, John Wallace. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Antoine Walker. For Syracuse at center, a 6'8 junior from White Plains, New York, number 4, Otis Hill. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'10 senior from Evansville, Indiana, number 40, Walter McCartney. For Syracuse at guard, a 6'7 junior from Brooklyn, New York, and 45, Jason Sapova. For Kentucky at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brownsville, Tennessee, number 00, Tony Dell. For Syracuse at guard, a 6'4 senior from Syracuse, New York, number 3, Lazarus Sim.
for Kentucky and guard, a 6'2 junior from Lebanon, Kentucky, number 25, Anthony Adams. And the coaches for Syracuse in his 20th season, Jim Beheim. For Kentucky in his 7th season, Rick Pitino. Professor Packers, time for your game analysis, things to watch in this championship game. Boy, so many tonight, Jim, but we're going to lead off with a couple that get you the heat of the night, and that's the Kentucky Press. Can Syracuse withstand this pressure from so many different angles? Sims is the key man here. The Dazzling Dozen. Jim, somebody's got to give a name to this Kentucky team. You know, they've had rough fronts, and they've had the Fab Five. I'm going to give them the Dazzling Dozen because that bench scoring in minutes is so important to Kentucky. The third thing coming up, the Mead Hook. I'm talking about Dimitri Hill, not Otis Hill. He had 29 points and 10 rebounds against this Kentucky team. They're very similar in style. Can Otis duplicate that performance? It's important inside. And loose as a goose. Now that's the difference in the mental philosophy of these two teams. Syracuse, extremely loose. Kentucky is likewise. But I think if Syracuse can stay in this game as long as possible, Maybe that ultimate pressure will finally phase Kentucky. So far, they've shown no signs of it. But if this game is tight down the wire, believe me, they'll start thinking about it. Rick Pitino's first championship game. Jim Beheim's second. He was there in 87. Only the fall to a Keith Smart shot at the buzzer. I'll make the prediction, Jim. This will not be their last national championship game. John Clockerty, Scott Gornley, David Libby draw the choice assignment. Wallace has been getting every tip on people. No guy. Nice touch by Wallace. Kentucky ball. Right off his foot. We had two beautifully officiated games Saturday. Let's hope these guys have as good a success. There's the two-three zone, Jim. Walker in the middle is the answer. He'll take the turnaround and come up shy right away. Syracuse ball. It's two-three zone vaulted during the NCAA tournament. And Jim, you're going to see Kentucky start inside and work out as opposed to what Mississippi State did Saturday. Ball has passed, deflected, but back to him. Here's Hill. They'll double him up. What a first half he had Saturday. What a tournament he's had. He's been outstanding. Ahead to Del. No travel. travel. No travel. That pass, though, into the arms of Behan. Well, he almost made it to a Final Four in 66 as a player with Dave Bing. Got knocked off by Duke. Pretty good catch by a man who had a great senior year. He came to Syracuse to Beheim as a walk-on, left as a co-captain with Bing. And 30 years ago, they lost to Duke in the East Final to get to the Final Four. And here, Walker on Wallace. Wallace really can handle the ball in the open court. Probably be the secondary ball handler for this team. Sims obviously the primary guy on Dell. Wallace steps in. Travel. He's looking around. What? Might have been a little makeup. He traveled the first time and it was missed. So he get caught on the second. He thought maybe he was heading for the free throw line. These teams played last year at Rupp Arena. Kentucky won 77-71 in an error-marred game. Walker baseliner. And Sims with the board. Syracuse racing into the front court. Anderson doing a lot of hand checking. Reach it in. Anderson. Billy, when these two played last year, phenomenal number of turnovers in that game. Again, only a six-point win by Kentucky on its home floor. Forcing 33 Syracuse turnovers. Syracuse hasn't had that many in a game since. And for that matter, Kentucky had 25 turnovers. They haven't matched that since. Wallace gets it back, though. And there you go. John Wallace gets the game's first bucket. Now, there's the power, the combination of Wallace and Hill. If Kentucky does have a, a weakness. It's an interior strength. That's a Sapola. Kentucky with a shaky start, is firing. That Sims must have eyes in the back of his head. You know, a lot of guys chase him down, but he always seems to get by him. Another traveling call on the Orangeman. Here Wallace on the inside, excellent move. Got by with a little swim stroke there. 
gets it back. Nobody going on the boards to check him out. He's too strong a player to let have his way inside. Mark Pope has come in for Kentucky. Pacino right away says, I need a little bit more weight down in low against those two fellows. So John Walker, who missed a couple of shots. That extra pass by Kentucky so important. up out front. Yep, stepped in and dished out. Delk three. Perkins went right for Delk's waist but shows the concentration that Delk has on the shot. He kept his eye right on target. Terrific shooter. Sims uses his wide body too as a dribbler, Jim. Constantly keeping his body between himself and the man gardening. Bergen drives, then dishes, and a turnover. Remember, Syracuse on Saturday committed only five for the game, and two of them were in the last minute. They've but, already had three here, Billy, in the game's first two and a half. Well, consider the opponent as well. Kentucky will turn it over. Make them turn it over constantly. Now, they're not putting a man on the foul line like they had with Walker at the start of the game. Something I'm expecting them to deploy early. Eric Anderson missing. Ball tipped around back to Epps, who will reset. Well, Syracuse not a great rebounding team out of this zone, even though they've got size back there. Bouncing it in to Pope. Almost lost it. Beautiful interior back. McCarty, Anderson missing the way in. Second try, and Hill gets the grasp. Kentucky is good an interior passing team as you're going to see. Look at Anderson, as quick as he is. Yeah, Patino helped him make the call. It was right in front of the Kentucky bench. A push off on Sims. Now Sims, as I said, likes to use his body to keep the defender away. Anderson's staying right with him, and they called that a little push off. Kind of a touch. Probably the fact that Sims is so much heavier he just knocked Anderson back. Jim Beheim wanting to work these officials a little bit. Wise move on his part. Antoine Walker back in. Anderson out. Obviously, he cannot afford the fouls. the baseline. He got the pass. Jimmy, that's the play against the 2-3. Get it in the center and operate. The pull up. Looked at the hole for a moment. They brought in Ron Mercer, freshman number 33 for Kentucky. And here's where Kentucky is very underrated. Their half-court defense is six. Well, too strong for Walker. Maybe a little bit too excited there. Didn't have a good touch on the shot. Mercer had the great game on Saturday. And not many minutes played, but came in for an important field goal. Yeah, big minutes. Nine points for the freshman. Sepulveda with the steal. Sims looks up for it, but no one there. Sepulveda setting up. Got the feet planted. Three-pointer. Two long. Five to Kentucky. Four and a half into the game. Only a Wallace put back. They are has been so far. There's the spot that makes the zone adjust. Anytime they get the ball on the ball line, Syracuse has to make big adjustments. And Delk hits his second three-pointer. Bergen pass deflected, but Wallace able to get it across just in time. Hill in the paint. Sapola for two. Good passing by Syracuse. Excellent hesitation by Sapola. Sapola's biggest game. He had 25 here in the Meadowlands against Seton Hall, so he has to feel comfortable here. Delk travel. Now, Tony Delk loves that jump move. Didn't get away with it there. Now watch what's going to happen. Kentucky comes inside, and then they work outside, and Hill has to make the adjustment. Watch how Kentucky deploys. Man comes up in the open area. Good bounce pass. Too late for Syracuse to adjust. And I believe Kentucky will wear that out until the Syracuse zone 2-3 becomes a 2-1-2. J.B. Reed Snyder has come in for Syracuse, number 32, and Jeff Shepard on the ball right now for Kentucky, number 15. They double up Bergen. They got a two-on-one at this end. Sapola will challenge. Now kick it back out. Sapola should have passed that ball as soon as he touched it. They had a nice two-on-one opportunity for a layup. Sapola takes the three. And Shepard. Bergen reached in, knocked 
knocked it out. Kentucky ball. Kentucky 33 and 2 on the year, while Syracuse 29 and 8. Jim, one of the things Syracuse probably does as well as anybody because they're good overall team size is they'll throw the ball over the top of a press. And they've been doing it pretty effectively, but not finishing on the other end. Anderson steps in. Shepard does as well. They keep trying to go inside out. Walker and Wallace with the long rebound. Sims broke early. Ahead to Bergen. What do they call it? They're going charge. Charge on Bergen. Now here is where fouls really can hurt Syracuse. They can make that bench so short. Good hit ahead. Bergen needed to stop. Shepard did a great job getting back on defense. Party in for Kentucky. Reef Snyder down in the hole now. Billy, you saw it. They've already matched the number of turnovers they committed on Saturday against Mississippi State. Credit Kentucky.